Good afternoon. Today I'm going to be discussing resizing the Oyster bracelet in my Rolex Oyster Perpetual 41. As you know, I purchased this piece back in March of this year, but since March this has sat in my safe rather than me wearing it daily on my wrist. And the reason for that is quite simple. The Oyster bracelet on the Oyster Perpetual 41 was too tight for my large 8 inch wrist. Really the 41's bracelet is made to fit collectors with a maximum 7 inch wrist size, it's too tight for a 7.5 or 8 inch wrist. Now normally I would simply visit my Rolex authorised dealer and order the two additional Oyster bracelet links needed. But however due to lockdown my Rolex AD was closed and therefore I had to patiently wait for lockdown restrictions to ease and therefore the AD to reopen. Now I'm pleased to report that the AD has now reopened and therefore I was able to order the two Oyster links and today they posted them to me and I immediately fitted them to the Oyster bracelet and have got the correct fit. So in this video I'm going to talk you through the tools I use and also give you some tips with regards to resizing Rolex Oyster bracelets which also may apply to other watch brands. The first thing you're going to need is blue tack and I'll show you what I use that for. This nylon bracelet block is very useful for holding bracelets. The purpose of the block is to hold the bracelet sideways and therefore one has two hands free to remove the screws and remove links and refit them and it's very useful. Now on the reverse I like to put four dots of blue tack in each of the four corners and that means one can stick down the nylon bracelet block to the desktop and therefore one doesn't need a left hand to hold the bracelet block steady and also the bracelet in place. One has one one's hand free uh, to guide the tip of the screwdriver onto the screw head with both fingertips. So it's better to stick it down and therefore place the bracelet into it and therefore one doesn't have to hold it from moving around. Otherwise there's a risk that one slips with the screwdriver tip and one can scuff and scratch the bracelet link. So I stick it down to the desktop and then I use this. Now this is capped on polymide tape and Capton polymide tape has a useful property of a very high melting point of 300 degrees Celsius. The other benefit of using Capton polymide tape rather than alternative tape such as insulating tape or masking tape is that it peels off bracelet links without leaving any adhesive residue. One can use um, masking tape or alternatively electrical insulating tape but they leave behind a adhesive residue and therefore one has to use either acetone or alcohol gel to remove that adhesive residue. With capped on polymide tape it doesn't leave any residue behind so it's often used by jewellers, watchmakers and also watch dealers when they are resizing bracelet links. The other thing it does is it protects the bracelet links from scuffs and scratches so for example if you slip with the screwdriver tip you're not going to scuff or scratch the screw head or the bracelet link. Now this is inexpensive to buy from Amazon. I bought a 30 metre roll of it and that will be enough to last for years and it really is excellent quality. Now there's another reason why I like to use capped on polymide tape. Before removing the links one needs to heat them up with a blowtorch. This is a butane blowtorch and as you can see it's adjustable. The brand I use is Woe Putney. These are available from Amazon. They're inexpensive and one uses an aerosol can of butane lighter fuel to refill the gas cylinder inside so they're reusable. One can fill it back up using lighter fuel and I like the fact one can adjust the flame to get the point of the flame to a precision point. So therefore one's only heating up the end of the screw rather than the entire bracelet link. Now a word of caution, one only needs to heat up the thread lock in Rolex Oyster bracelet screws for 10 seconds. That will suffice in melting the thread lock and therefore making it easier to unscrew the uh, screw from the bracelet. One doesn't need to heat it up for more than 10 seconds. Now you'll find with 9040 Oyster Steel it conducts heat very quickly so 10 seconds of heat will actually heat up several of the links even if one directs the tip of the flame onto the end of the screw. The Oyster Steel will conduct the heat rapidly and the heat will quickly spread throughout the bracelet so I would advise that you wear a leather glove to protect your left hand from the heat generated in the Oyster links otherwise you'll burn your hand very quickly. So I put the capped on polymide tape over the screw heads in the bracelet and then what I do is I heat up the reverse end. So just to clarify, one puts the polymide tape over the slotted screw head on this side of the Oyster bracelet and one heats up the other end as you can see uh, with the butane blowtorch. For 10 seconds you direct the flame and then what I do is I place the Oyster bracelet 
into the block which I've stuck down to the desk as you can see and the Kapton polymide tape will melt although it does have a 300 degree Celsius melting point but it will still remain stuck to the uh, screw heads and also the oyster links and then what you do is you pierce the screwdriver tip through the Kapton polymide tape into the slot of the screw head and that means you'll get a very tight fit between the tool steel uh, tip of the screwdriver and the slot in the screw there'll be no play whatsoever very tight fit and that means you're not going to chew the screw head so again that's another tip because often the mistake that collectors make is that they don't heat up the thread lock in the screws in the oyster bracelet they simply put the screwdriver cold into the cold screw and therefore the thread lock prevents it unscrewing and they inevitably end up chewing the screw head in the bracelet or the other thing they do is they slip with the uh, screw because they're trying to exert so much torsion on the tip of the screw head to unscrew it because it's locked. They slip, they chew the screw and then they scuff the oyster bracelet. The Kapton polymide tape prevents all that as does heating up the thread lock to melt it and break the bond between the thread of the screw and the oyster link. So then I unscrew the screw, remove it and then split the bracelet and add the additional links and then put the screw back in and then cover it again with polymide tape do the reverse and then screw it back up using the screwdriver tip. So I'll give you a wrist shot and you can see how it fits on my 8 inch wrist. Now firstly I'll just explain the Oyster bracelet on the 41 comes with 12 full size links. The correct orientation is on the 6 o'clock side of the head of the piece. There should be 5 full size links. On the 12 o'clock side of the head of the piece there should be 7 full size links. Now there's a reason why Rolex offset the clasp you would think that they would have six links either side for symmetry so that the clasp would hang symmetrically underneath the head of the piece but they don't actually do that they put five links on one side and seven on the other side and the reason for that is the clasp used on the 41 is actually shorter as you can see if you look at the internals the internals are longer than the exterior so the clasp used is shorter than the glide lock clasp for example because it doesn't have a flip lock mechanism and therefore Rolex put seven links on one side and five on the other. Now what I've done is I've added an additional link on the six o'clock and the twelve o'clock side so as you can see it has six links on one side and it now has eight links on the other side. So I'll give you a wrist shot and you can see how it fits on my eight inch wrist. Now I'll give you some advice on sizing bracelets. As you can see this now fits me very well. It's not too tight, there is room for wrist expansion. The correct method of sizing a bracelet, regardless of whether it is an oyster bracelet or a jubilee bracelet, uh, irrespectively, is to be able to slide an index finger underneath the bracelet at all times. That is the correct sizing method. Now the reason why one allows an index width of expansion underneath the clasp at all times is to allow for wrist expansion in warm weather if one is active playing sports for example the wrist swells and really one needs to have a, an index finger width of expansion underneath the bracelet and clasp at all times to allow for expansion so that really negates the need for an easy link extension or alternatively a glide lock extension to adjust on the fly if an oyster bracelet is sized correctly using the index finger method, one doesn't need to adjust the bracelet on the fly. That is the perfect sizing method. Now, it's a mistake that collectors often make. I've often seen collectors with both Jubilee and also oyster bracelets. They size the bracelet so that it is a tight fit on their wrist. There's no room for wrist expansion. And they either rely upon the easy link extension or alternatively the glide lock mechanism to adjust the uh, bracelet. But that's actually the incorrect method. The reason why it's incorrect is by sizing the bracelet too tight without that tindex finger of expansion, it puts the pins, the screw pins of the bracelet into shear. And it puts the bracelet pins into shear on both sides of the center link. And what that does is it expedites the wear of the bracelet. One often sees vintage Rolex pieces, both with Jubilee and Oyster bracelets, with stretch in the bracelet. And often the reason for stretch is simply that they, the collector that owned the piece sized it too tight. And when their wrist expand, what it did was it put the pins into shear. And therefore that expedited the wear of the pins and therefore it became stretched, it became a sloppy slack fit. By having the index finger of expansion underneath, it reduces the shear load on each of those pins and therefore the holes in the links and also the pins themselves don't grind away as quickly. They last a longer length of time. 
904L Oyster Steel is actually a slightly softer material than 316L. Now, the benefit is that it does gain a lovely luster. As you can see, the grains of the Oyster Steel do have a lovely sheen. There is a lovely luster to 904L, which is superior to 316L grade stainless steel. But the negative is that 904L isn't as hard as 316L. So therefore it does wear more, it's softer, so therefore it is important to have um, room between the links and the pins uh, for that expansion so shear load isn't put onto the pins. So that's the reasoning behind having um, a slightly loose bracelet and it's the same applies to Jubilee and Oyster bracelets but as you can see this one is sized correctly and I'm absolutely delighted with the fit with the six links on one side and the eight links on the other side. Now lastly I'll just show you something else. On the Oyster Perpetual 41 there are three micro adjustment holes on the interior of the clasp. Now there are three dimples, three pairs of dimples on either side. So looking at this you might think well how do I actually adjust it? There's an easy link extension which one can pop out with a click and that extends the length of the bracelet by five millimeters. And if one pops out the easy link extension that then reveals the two slots for the spring bar inside the clasp as you can see. So one uses the Bergen 6767F as I've shown you with the fine tip and this is why the very fine two prong fork in the end, just bear with me I'll get the camera to focus on my tip of my finger, there we are. This is the advantage of using a Bergen 6767F because it has a very fine two pronged fork uh, in the end of this spring bar tool and that will engage in the very fine slots inside the clasp. Just bear with me and I'll show you again. There we are. So there are two slots inside and one presses in the spring bar either end and then one can move the easy link extension in or out by three notches. There are three dimples either side. So I experimented. I found the outer notch was too loose, the inner notch was too slack, uh, too tight, sorry. And I found that the middle of the three links, uh, the three dimples, was the best fit. Now, obviously, it's not as good as a glide lock. I really think that Rolex should introduce the glide lock uh, clasp to all their watches in their collection. Um, but however, they're not doing that. Um, they're only doing it on the Submariner and Submariner dates. And I think that's a mistake. I really think the glide lock is an improvement. I don't like the Easy Link extension. Yes, it is useful to have five millimeters of extension and it does pop in and out well. Uh, but however, it's not as good as a glide lock. So that is my one criticism of the clasp used on the Oyster Perpetual, although it is very well executed and it does suffice. So really that's all the tips I have to give you on resizing Oyster bracelets. Now you can also apply um, heating up the screws and using polyamide tape to other bracelets regardless of whether your piece has a Jubilee or an Oyster bracelet. I've used the same methods on a strap code Super O Boya bracelet for example and it worked very well. It avoids chewing the screw heads and it also means that one protects the links. If one slips with the screwdriver tip you're not going to scuff and scratch the bracelet links. So I hope you've liked my discussion of resizing my Rolex Oyster Perpetual 41 Oyster bracelet. Please feel free to post your own comments below the video. Thank you very much.